1836 is the year in which Spain officially renounced most of its claims to South America and Central America, basically giving up on its colonial ambitions and giving up on most of its former colonies. Prior to this, between 1808 and 1821, almost all of the colonial possessions that Spain had declared independence, with the first ones being the Argentinians, the Chileans, Paraguayans, Uruguayans around 1810, 1811, declared declaring their official independence and the rest following suit. Spain was invaded in 1808 by the uh, armies of Napoleon and there was a lot of civil unrest and a lot of overall horrible situations that Spain had to go through afterwards, even after Napoleon was defeated, especially after Napoleon was defeated. That's why in 1836 we're left with only Cuba as a colony in the New World and with the Philippines and Asia, as well as small sprinkles of colony here and there around Africa and some small islands around the world as well. We also start with Isabella de Bourbon, which at the time was five years old, but she did have a pretty long life and reigned historically up until 1870 or something like that when she was ousted. And then we had uh, for a couple of years, actually for three years, we had an Italian from the House of Savoy ruling Spain, followed by the son of Isabella after 1873, if I remember correctly. The point I'm trying to make is that Spain is not an easy country. In fact, Spain is probably one of the hardest countries to play in Victoria 3 since it has a non-existent economy. You can tell from the fact that by default we're losing 10,000 ducats here and by ducats I mean pounds of course. <laughs> So we're gonna fix that first by setting up some consumption taxes. We're gonna go with services as always. Tobacco, if you're gonna be smoking, you gotta pay the smoke tax, all right? Luxury clothing for all of those Coco Chanel enjoyers, as well as porcelain or porcelain or porcelain or porcelain or schmegagabadabadu. That's the real word that porcelain actually has, okay? Our first research is gonna be the stock exchange since we need the extra trade route bureaucracy cost reduction. Plus, our economy relies on the wooden sector, so we're gonna change that to iron frame building. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to build a few more iron mines, tool workshops, and coal mines. But first, we're gonna build three more construction sectors, followed by five government administrations in Toledo. Since we start with minus 200 bureaucracy, and we're gonna get even more debuff after we start setting up our trade routes. We do need a lot of trade routes. We also want to get our urban centers to market squares and to gas street lights it is going to cost a lot of coal so i recommend before you switch to this you wait for your coal mine to actually finish building so that's after your government administration so it takes a little bit of time you can see clearly we already start to have uh, shortages so go to your trade lens and let's check what we actually need to import coal might be an issue iron for sure there you go 15 20 21 21 oh my god that's actually a lot of money from just importing iron Grain also we're lacking apparently, so let's go for that. Glass as well. Even small arms. Let's get small arms from the Americans. They know what they're doing when it comes to guns, don't they? Holy mother of God. Tools from Qing looks like made in China is of the highest quality in the 1800s, uh, isn't it? No, it's not. It's it's the same as the 20th hundreds. One more thing I recommend you do is you promote your generals since we want them to have 40 units available per army when we start doing our invasions in the new world and we're also going to be going to our navy recruit an admiral iberia hq let's see what do we have here convoy raider not bad he is bigoted though how about this guy cruel and demagogue i'm gonna go for the convoy raider same thing goes for this guy promote him so he manages to get 30 up to 40 ships eventually once we build more naval bases and our first targets are going to be around here we have to set up our diplomatic lens though so let's go with that so we're going to cancel the scandinavian and the uh, oc10 areas and we're going to switch on over to here. Basically the entirety of the former Spanish colonial empire. Since that is going to be our main target for this campaign. We're basically trying to make Spain great again, okay? I've intentionally started building almost all of my buildings in the capital. That's why I'm going to be setting the road maintenance that gives an extra 10% construction efficiency here. To make it a little bit quicker that we finish all of these buildings. Since we are struggling here big time. 68% tax waste. That is horrible, boy. 
toys. We've also managed to finish our interest in the new world, so now that that's established, we can start with the maybe puppeting of Venezuela. There is a chance that somebody else might join in this. Hopefully, with a little bit of RNG, we don't get anyone involved, and we can just quickly puppet these boys. Well, in my case, I have to go to war with them. The Russians are helping me out, but <laughs> let's face it, that's probably a debuff right there. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our military, Navy, set up a naval invasion. Let's go with their capital, I believe, in Miranda. It, it, it is their capital, right? We can assign that general, and now we just have to wait for the naval invasion to happen. They are supported by Mexico and I think New Granada, so we're gonna have to fight the Mexicans and New Granada too. Duels? We're not gonna accept any duels in our country. That is very, very medieval of you, sir. We have a pretty easy time there. I've also done a second invasion here, so I can uh, hold off the New Granada units and I can piece them out quickly as well. They have most of their troops tied up in this front, so I quickly am advancing through the entirety of New Granada here with that second naval invasion. So always use naval invasions to your advantage. I'm not gonna bullshit you guys. Naval invasions are almost an exploit at this point in this game. They really need to be a little bit rebalanced because the way that they work right now, you can have five, six naval invasions and as such open five, six different fronts and just completely kill off the enemy army. There you go. We capitulated New Granada extremely easy with that extra naval invasion and that means we are only fighting six battalions and we just got our puppeting of Venezuela noise. We've just started our reaction acquisition of the new world. We're essentially back in business, boys. Next target would have been New Granada, but because we have a truce with them now, I believe, right? Yes, we do. We have a truce until 1842. That's quite a few years. So let's see if I can snipe out another nation, maybe Ecuador or anyone like that around this area. I might also try and get direct ownership over provinces now instead of puppeting them since I already have a few puppets in the new world. I'm also going to be enacting the dedicated police force legislation since a lot of my population want this and check it out boys we're building stuff but we are in the positive with our economy finally so we're definitely making progress way better than our starting situation overall looks like nobody is actually supporting haiti okay if then nobody supports them they might cave in they didn't cave in and they're by themselves what whoa haiti that is extreme extremely extremely ballsy of you the balls of haitian people are 10 times the average person's balls apparently this is probably the shortest war in the history of short wars since you know they have three battalions compared to the might of the spanish empire right we're back in business boys come on cannot deny that we have a might all right except you can but just don't do it please Please. I'm also going to be banning slavery. We don't want to be backwards like all of those other countries in the world that are backwards because they have slaves. <coughs> USA. <coughs> so uh, we're going to be uh, a progressive nation, boys. Oh no, the Central American countries have split apart. There's a thousand of them now. Time to conquer. Avec le war against Costa Rica. Wait, they got Nicaragua and New Granada again. Oh man. That means I'm going to get a new truce with New Granada for real. That's annoying. That's actually annoying. And once more, a very quick capitulation of Granadsky, and we managed to get Costa Rica. Nice. This is directly controlled by us, so let's incorporate it and make it a part of our country. A stepping stone towards complete domination in Central and South America. Hey, we managed to ban slavery just in time for our conquest of Honduras. Beautiful new state. We shall build a lot of banana plantations here. That's that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be known as Banana Land through the entirety of our country. You know, it's fun. Funny, I'm taxing the shit out of these people and there's still more loyalists than uh, radicals in my country. Ah, aber unser Railwaystein, ja? This will be a very good help. Especially since I need railways to uh, fix my market access in some of my uh, Spain main states here. I'm gonna build a railway in every single state since I want to change to railway transport my production methods for the uh, mines first and foremost and then change them for everything really. I need to stomp out the oligarchy in my country so I'm gonna be switching over to wealth voting. It's not the most popular of uh, distribution of power laws but it is gonna be passed whether they like it or not because I'm still an autocracy until I pass this okay? You see the irony in this whole situation? What is this like war number seven against the Central American nations? Oh wow that was actually super quick. Did they just give up? No they didn't. We capture them and we destroy their country. Now it is our country as it always should have been from the beginning 
Queen, Colonial Scumbags. Oh, thank you very much, Queen, for the 20% extra enactment chance. Queen is clearly on the side of the wealthy here. Imagine fighting Russian troops in Ecuador and winning. This is not too hard to imagine. Russian troops are trash in this freaking game at the start. And we managed to fully conquer all of Ecuador, despite the Russians trying to help them out. That was just a pathetic attempt, I'm not gonna lie. In this game, at the start at least, whenever Russia supports a side, you know you're gonna win because you're gonna win fighting against those weak Russian troops. Abusing basic combat mechanics is literally the best thing in this game right now. And I'm gonna use it until they actually fix this because look at this boys. We got three fronts, two of these, most of the enemy armies are trapped in and my third front, I'm advancing and I just capitulated the entirety of uh, Peru, Bolivia, getting a massive chunk of their land in the process with little to no consequences for my own troops. That should not be in the game, just saying. Remember, after you take new lands that you're gonna have to reassign your production methods since uh, those provinces, if they had the factories that you have, they will have other production methods if they don't have the same technology. The great educational reform of 1853 is about to happen since I'm gonna be building a ton of universities, 25 universities in total. Let's educate our people and make them the smartest in the world. I waited for quite a while for my infamy to go down since I had pretty high infamy. I was like at 45 at one point, but now it's a lot better so we can start attacking Colombia this time. I'm gonna add a few more states into this war. I'm not sure if I can take the whole country, but I'll definitely try to. 100% going for Panama since we want to get the Panama Canal established. I added as many war goals as I could to this war, but sadly I'm up to 51 infamy right now, so I have to wait before a massive coalition is gonna destroy my country. We need to get all these states here. We got a few fronts going. We got one from the north, one from the east, one from the west, and we also have a couple of Salvadorian front. Wait, did we already win that? Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> this should be a fairly easy war. We actually managed to get skirmish infantry now, and we have a good amount of stockpile goods as well. The only thing I'm really worried about in this war is just, you know, I need to wait for this infamy to go down before I do anything else. We're at 47. That's actually pretty good. It's going down surprisingly fast, not gonna lie. And there you go. We got our war goal enforced on El Salvador and we have all of the Colombian stuff that we wanted. We couldn't take the entirety of Colombia, so we got two more states we're gonna take in the next war against them. But now at least we have a connection between our Venezuelan puppet and our holdings, direct holdings in uh, South America. Check out our GDP, boys. We went up to 45 million GDP. Well, it's going down a little bit. The reality is that this this is up because we've mostly conquered new provinces. We've outshined the Americans, we've outshined the Italians, which have just unified, but we're still a little bit behind the Prussians, so we gotta work our asses to get above the Prussians. That means more buildings, more industry, and better legislation. We're kind of struggling with the legislation part, so we probably will have to uh, redo our government here, maybe allow the industrialists in. This way we can change some of the horrible laws that we still have enacted. Let's also go to our state action and let's incorporate all of these states here. Take note, if you do not incorporate a state, they're going to get more migrants into there. So sometimes if you want to get a lot of population in a particular state, do not incorporate it. Instead, leave it unincorporated until you're ready to make it a proper part of your country. There we go. We got right of assembly. That should help us out with uh, dissent and with radicals, which we're quite okay with. 3 million loyalists and only 900,000 radicals is an absolute great balance between the two. Guaranteed Liberties also helps massively with getting more loyalists and getting rid of the radicals. And yes, we've once more been at war with the Colombians, this time to take the Nicaraguan lands, not really the Colombian lands, as well as the Miskiko Kingdom that was, I believe, protected or a dominion of the Brits, but we basically third partied them without having to fight the Brits. Now look at this beautiful area here. We are actually starting to look like a proper colonial empire once more. Why didn't the Spanish just historically do this? Seriously. We got 85% chance to enact the per capita taxation and guess what? We have the opposition here with preserve land based taxation. Support low. Radicalism low. Why is that? Because nobody wants land based taxation. Everybody wants per capita, alright? This right here is the vocal minority represented in the game. For real. It is actually the vocal minority. It's the rich people going, yo, don't, no, stop. And the rest of the population just giving them the stink eye, you know? Also, if you're wondering how come I got almost 6 million loyalists 
and growing and only 600,000 uh, radicals and dropping, it's because I've prioritized passing the good laws first, like right of assembly, banning slavery, guaranteed liberties, and so on. There's still a few laws that I can pass that will help with it. But giving these laws out first means that people are going to be happy to be a part of our country. And not only that, but whenever I switched to a new production method, which in turn meant that I fired people, I tried not to switch all of my industries at the same time. So I don't fire everybody at the same time as consequence, meaning the people that got unemployed found a new job fairly quickly in the new factories that I built. Also, looks like the Ottomans discovered Jack the Ripper once more, this time in Spain, not the US. Jackie oh boy clearly likes to go around the world, doesn't he? And also, we just got power plants. It's gonna take a while to build these, but once we have electrified our grid and we switched over to an electric-based production force, well, that's when it's all gonna start kicking up massively. Speaking of, we should probably build some more construction sectors whilst we're at it now. Oh my god, we just got per capita taxation look at this guy's 131,000 balance with medium taxation let's bring this down to a very low taxes and we're still making 30,000 it's pretty stupid that we don't have colonial exploitations as the Spanish the greatest colonial empire of all times not considering the British okay we're not thinking about those guys we're just only thinking about the Spanish and as consequence they are the greatest you shut up okay it doesn't make sense whatever all right we're going for colonial exploitation and you're gonna to love it. A revitalization of the golden age of Spain is about to start. We're gonna conduct it with another invasion of Colombia. It's fairly easy when you're using trench coat units against, I'm guessing they have irregulars or some schnapps still. It's like when we did it to the natives, boys. It's like when we did it to the natives. Time to also start getting colonies in Africa for ourselves. Right now, the British and the uh, Americans, surprisingly, have also established massive colonial empires around here with America. American Windward Coast, American Gambia, and even the French have significant chunks of Africa. Not happy with that. I want some Africa for myself, okay? Give me some Africa. The capital of Colombia had a massive amount of GDP, my boys. Look at our growth. And not only our growth, but look at our name on the map, boys. Let's face it, any PDX game, it's all about the name on the map, not anything else. I'm also around the 45 to 50 infamy limit pretty much this entire campaign. I'm also trying to use this as a test to see if I can do a world conquest. Obviously, as the Spanish is not as great as it would be as other nations, say if I start as Russia and mainly focus on conquering the world, it would be 10 times easier than, right? Or if I do it as the British or as the Americans or anyone else that's, you know, stronger from the beginning. Hold on a second, boys. What the schnapps? Nova Scotia, an independent nation between Canada and the US. What? How? How did this happen? I have so many questions right now. Looks like Brazil made the mistake of actually defending Bolivia. I was not going to take Brazilian land. But now that Brazil committed this atrocity, I'm going to have to attack him afterwards and take all of Brazil also. As compensation for, you know, pissing me off. Imagine getting 137,000 pounds as profit when you are at war. That's just how freaking strong we are right now. Oh no, what's going on here? Radical Brazil is at war with Brazil. Brazil. I'm not sure what's worse about that statement. The fact that Brazil is not radical enough that it has to have radical rebels. I mean, have you seen Brazil, my boys? Imagine having the audacity of trying to break away from my beloved empire. And here's a little trick that I learned from some of you guys in the comment section. If you hold shift and you click, you actually build five buildings at the same time. I like how we just overtook the North German Confederation. Kind of pepega how just uh, the North bit of Germany here has so much economy. It's basically the equivalent of the entirety of South America. Well, most of South America. It will be the entirety soon. Come on, boys, go to war with me. Hell yeah, my boys, let's do it. We also should probably rush with this because I need to destroy the Brazilians and that's going to take a few wars, let's face it. Also going to have to wait for my E to go down quite a while. Like I said, cannot really go against my units when my units are Chad Lord Trench Infantry. Look at how amazing these guys look. One's got a pickle hob the other one's got a allied uniform. I don't know what the schnapps is happening in this picture. It looks a little bit like the United Colors of Benetton, doesn't it? You know, 
the brand that has sweatshops in South America. So this is kind of historical when you think about it. There goes Bolivia. Now we're going to take a few states from Argentina too. I couldn't fully annex them. I already have like, what, 60 aggressive expansion? 58 infamy. I should probably not call it aggressive expansion either. Way more beautiful our country now. Look at that juicy stuff there. And these areas, of course, are in dire need of railways since they don't have that much uh, market access. We want to bring the market access here to 100%. Wait a second. In Acre, isn't this a, a province in the Middle East? Did they just go like, yo, I like the name of this place. I'm gonna name a completely different area in the new world the same. Ah, eh, that's pretty much exactly how it happened, isn't it? Ooh, Germany's at war again, this time with uh, Bavaria and Russia. And I'm liking what I'm seeing here because if I get a strong Germany in the northern bits of Europe, then I can use them against my uh, soon-to-be rival of France. Taking Santa Cruz and La Paz is a great opportunity to build a lot of oil mines since oil is going to pick up in value as we go along in the game and these two areas here have massive oil reserves which we lack everywhere else in our empire right now. Imagine having the first two pages of your construction queue being built at the same time. This is when we start to ramp up our economy. And yes we're going over to proportionate taxation which is going to give us right now an extra 150,000 ducats and growing we've also started serving the panama canal so we can build the canal finally here so the italians decided that they want to help brazil defend its nation i'm okay with that but i'm still gonna kick their asses even though it is italy and they have more units than me i still have trench infantry shrapnel artillery and i can also switch over to motorized reconnaissance i'm not doing it just yet because i need a little bit more oil and automobiles i am not producing any automobiles just yet so until i start producing those i'm gonna stick with my bicycle reconnaissance i just hope that italy does not start another front over here and attacks me in my homeland that's gonna be an issue because i don't have anything to defend with here we're definitely pushing them though every single engagement we've had so far we've won against both italians and brazilian units and i hope that's gonna be the trend for the entirety of this war and it looks like we can finally build the panama canal let's go over to development panamaski and build the Maximus here. Wait, we can build more than one? Hold up a second. What? We can build two Panama Canals? I am so confused right now. Oh, and the cool part is you can actually see it on the map as it is constructed. We're also doing another naval invasion so we can start a second front over here and uh, divide the uh, Brazilian slash Italian forces in two. We're getting a lot of lands before they even realize what happened here, pushing them ever so closer to capitulating in the war. I really hope they add in the future when they revamp warfare because i'm hoping that's coming by the way i hope they add the option of actually giving orders to your generals so like you know conquer the war target because right now i'm not getting too much uh, war score because they didn't conquer the war target why beyond me that's what i would have rushed for first and i wish i had an order to tell them to rush for that first and we won the war as expected even the italians are nothing for the might of the sponash that's what we're calling ourselves now the sponash you got a problem with that take it with the sponash foreign relations affairs okay what the schnapps another filipino insurrection Ugh, the south island of new zealand's giving me eye schnapple half owned by the u.s half owned by netherlands and with sprinkles of great britain and spain around i don't know what the hell to say man this is just disgusting quite surprisingly the ottomans managed to take back some of their provinces from egypt and did not completely collapse in this playthrough my couple of previous playthroughs when i tested spain they did collapse massively so kudos to them i guess they're the mvp of this run north germany also is doing the good old-fashioned manual conquest against bavaria instead of doing the pan-nationalist way i should definitely make the main theme of this video the naval invasions like i'm actually fighting austria with 600,000 units in the field and uh, argentina to take the argentinian lands and it was the same for chile it was the same for most of these i had to fight a second or third great power and the way that i won was simply with naval invasions because when you have too many fronts open the ai simply collapses and doesn't know how to handle it and that's how you just quickly win every single war this really is an exploit man you know that good old spanish saying say hello to my little friend well that applies now because we got machine guns okay machine guns go burr oh wow the amazon rainforest modifier and 
And the Serra dos Carayas modifier giving extra iron mine throughput and lumber. That is insane, man. The Goya state is amazing. Brazil actually has some super good modifiers now that I think about it. You know what, guys? If you want me to do a video on Brazil for Viki 3, let me know in the comment section. I would love to do a Brazil video, actually. We're also doing a quick cheeky invasion of the Netherlands to get their colonial holdings in South America. Talking about Guyana here. Must be weird for the Dutch to see the Spanish back again in their land after that 80 year war that they had before. Oh no, Step Spain, don't invade me again. We started this campaign with a deficit with basically no GDP and we ended with 482 million GDP in 1903, 66% literacy and growing by the day and an economy that is absolutely amazing. If we put this at high tax, we're actually getting close to a million. My point is that I actually had a lot of fun and the best part was honestly conquering all of South America and bringing these colonial scumbags back into the fold. Of course, the detriment is that we still have 56.5 notoriety, but that's to be expected. If you enjoy this run, you're gonna love my USA run right over here. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 